you know, governments, you know, when, when things are going well, governments like to take credit for it. Um, and I think there are certainly a lot of ways in which government have contributed to prosperity. I think more in terms of things like the rule of law, um, if you have security of contract in a big country, in a smaller country, people can do business shaking their hands. But in larger business, etc., there are ways in which governments have created the conditions for, for prosperity. Um, and in some occasions, like in the, you know, uh, the Depression, when governments created welfare programs and things that really helped people. But I think that, that much of prosperity comes from the work and ideas of individual people. But I think living in a secure society, you know, where there is some order and safety, certainly is a very important foundation stone. And some people underestimate or, or overlook how nice it is to live in a country where you're not afraid to go out and where you can, or, or you're not like, like Russia, you know, the Soviet Union, or even what Ukraine was like, where, you know, you create a good business and somebody comes along and steals it from you. So there's a lot to be said for good government. Bad government, that's another question. When you realize that government is about people and it's about all the people, if you are trying to govern without knowing the reality of life of many of the people who are going to be affected by what you're doing, you're not going to govern all that effectively. You're going to make mistakes and you're probably going to do some real injustices. So governments need to be, if not entirely representative of, but, but representative of the, ver the variety of lives that their citizens live or at least connected enough to communicate with them and understand them. For example, when I was justice minister and I was legislating on gun control, I talked to people who used guns. I talked to people who were competitive shooters. I talked to people about, you know, what would you do if, if we did this? How would that affect you? How would you, would you, you know, follow this rule? What would you do? And I learned a great deal. So I think what women have been able to do is to bring uh, the whole insight from the areas of the world that they know better than men. Now, there's lots of overlap. There's lots of ways in which, you know, men are very knowledgeable and, and, and you know, men can be very supportive of good family policy and rights for women, too. I mean, I don't like to sort of put men in one category and say, oh, we have to have women to, you know, neutralize the men. No. But there are ways in which our, our gender or our sex affects the reality of the life that we live. And, but the other thing I would say about having women in government, it isn't just that the women bring their approaches, but they share their approaches. I find that men are way more knowledgeable about women's issues when they work with women. You know, I mean, it helps if they are, you know, mothers and sisters and daughters, but they just, they're, and they're interested. They want to know. They're not offended by it. They say, you know, gee, I never knew that. Well, that helps me if I know that, that I can be a, a better member of parliament or a better minister. So it's just the way that it enriches the conversations that go into exercising government power. Exactly. Yeah. And I think even, not even just, you know, gender diversity, but generational diversity. You know, the, the reality of, of life among generations is changing rapidly. And even in one family, the oldest sibling might have a totally different experience of social media and these things than the youngest one and might not even be in a position to know if their youngest sibling is getting into trouble or having some difficulties. So we have to understand that there, the more perspectives, the better. You know, the world created channels of communication on climate change. And we started out with the Kyoto Protocol, and that didn't go so well. Going after the Paris Accord, uh, not perfect. Uh, getting there, a COP in uh, Glasgow had some success. We've got the channels now. Uh, do we have the agreement? And part of it goes back to you know what I talked about earlier today, that if you have uh, situations where countries don't have the constituency for good policy, now we know that there were some bodies and some American oil companies, for example, that were trying to undermine the science of climate change. And that made it hard for legislators because they sometimes didn't know, you know what was true and what wasn't. And if their populations thought that they were overreacting or things were costing too much money, uh, we didn't need to do them. Like Felipe Calderon, when he said this morning, we don't have to make the choice between economic prosperity 
and, and uh, dealing with climate change, the two go together. But if we're convinced that they don't, um, it makes it much more difficult. So I think that the, um, the channels for conversation are there. And we're also identifying more of the barriers to good policy making. But we still have to you know, create the constituencies to make it policy. The head of one of the Canadian oil companies last year or year before was very critical. He, he said climate change is real. This was a big deal that he said climate change. And he was very critical of what he called the politician, the, the, the climate deniers and the politicians who pander to them. And I thought, what do you mean the politicians who pander to them? Your company spends a fortune trying to convince climate policymakers that it isn't real. And you, you know, you, you make it so difficult for them. So now we're getting into a different world where some of the people who were trying to sweep it under the carpet understand they can't do that anymore. And I went to speak to the leadership of a major Canadian oil company. And I said, you know, I don't think we should shut down tomorrow. Uh, we're not ready yet, but you need to acknowledge the problem. And then you need to say, what kind of a company are we? Are we just an oil company or are we an energy company? What are our resources? What's our infrastructure? What transition might we do? I mean, the interesting thing about this part of the world is your capacity for solar energy, for example. You have a whole lot of other things that you can do. Um, and if you use the resources from your sunset industry to finance the investment for the next stage, you don't have to lose anything. I'm not in a position to evaluate the UAE government's communications because I'm not here enough to do that. But if I take this conference as an example, I would say that there's a, a lot of courage, um, a lot of clarity, um, and a desire to talk about issues honestly. That all of the people who are here from other countries are, are here to talk realistically about the issues and and I think and I think that's very important because I don't think it's easy you know it's sort of threatening you had this wonderful industry that's made you rich and now you're saying well maybe we can't do this exactly the same way anymore but on the other hand you know it used to be that pearling you know was the source of your income now it's still there uh, and fossil fuels won't go away entirely in the sense that there may be uses for the infrastructure there may even be some uses for the for the fuels themselves uh, I don't know, but but I think what what's important is that it seems to me that the governments of this part of the world are pretty realistic, and and that is a great example for the rest of the world too. You know that the conversation we're having here again, when governments communicate, the audience isn't just in their own country, and the. Um, the credibility they gain in international fora is a direct uh, reflection of the integrity of their domestic communications. So it makes you stronger as a country, globally, to be uh, sort of honest, straightforward, and courageous in your own country.